infectious biological agents was considered essential to an ultimate understanding of the bio-war potentialities because of the many unknown factors affecting the degradation of microorganisms in the atmosphere. These new weapons had to be tested somewhere. And the uh, General Accounting Office in the White House recently revealed that between 1942 and 1974, biological weapons were tested on 500,000 Americans. That's up to 1974. And there's probably been another 500,000 or more people who have been victims of the test. As I say, they thought they would not be communicable. They are communicable. And that is what is spreading today. And it, the same pathogen not only causes uh, CFIDs and fibromyalgia and so on, it also causes Alzheimer's, Huntington's, Parkinson's, uh, diabetes type 1, and about every one of these diseases, you check, every one of these diseases, they will tell you, or the authorities will tell you, that it's increasing dramatically. And there's no known cause. And there's no known cure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are known causes. The cause is known. There's less volume of blood than do ordinary people. You would have, if you're sick with one of these diseases, you have about a liter less blood than an average person would have. So Dr. Bell is infusing an IV of distilled water into these patients. And the reports, which are anecdotal at this point, look positive. But there are other hopes. There is a hope that springs from 1946, because when the disease was known as chronic brucellosis, there was a doctor out in uh, Los Angeles, California, Dr. Benning, and he said, well, look, here are these people who look like they've got brucellosis, but there's no bacteria in them. We test your blood, there's no brucellosis bacteria. But they look like they've got brucellosis. They've got the damaged heart, and they've got the damaged brain, they've got the damaged lungs, and they've got the aching bone, bones and joints, and they have the night nice sweats and everything. Everything points to them having this, but we can't find any bacteria. So Dr. Benning then had kind of an inspiration. He said, okay, let's do this. Let's get some volunteers, and we will give them some brucellosis. So they got 98 people who had chronic brucellosis so badly that they were all off work. They gave them an injection once a week for 10 weeks of killed brucellosis bacteria. Kill brucellosis bacteria. Why did they do that? Because the human immune system doesn't know the difference between a live bacteria and a dead one. So if it encounters a dead bacteria, because it's dead, it'll do you no harm. But when your immune system recovers or encounters it, the immune system has a marvelous capacity for intercellular communication. Cells seem to talk to each other. The cells in your toes know what the cells in your ears are up to. Uh, so he said, inject dead brucellosis bacteria into these people. Their immune system will go after those dead brucellosis bacteria, and in the process they will clean up the brucellosis toxin, which he called active principle, which seems to be there. And after 10 weeks, out of these 98 people, 58 were so well they were back to work. 30 were so well that they were negotiating with their employer to return to work on a part-time basis to increase the full-time within the next couple of months. And 10, it made no difference on that. Well, I had a telephone conference call with a doctor and some other researchers, and that conference call was with a doctor in an American university, and he said they would be interested in trying this out on chronic victims and fibromyalgia victims. Now there are other tests and other possibilities, but I wasn't here tonight to give you that. I wanted just to uh, let you know that if you look, 
you can tell where the diseases are coming from. And when you know where they're coming from, you can, under, you can undertake certain things which hold the prospect that they will be stopped. Now let me just quickly show you in a very simplified form. Here is the brucellosis bacteria, and here is its DNA pattern, chromosomes linked together. And each one of those linkages tells, uh, when, when they divide and make two bacteria, it tells the new bacteria how to, how to be made. It's the blueprint for a new bacteria. Along comes uh, bacteriophage T4, lands on the surface, just like this. Now this is actually made from a micrograph. These are actual, this is an actual picture of the virus is landing on the bacteria. But it's not the photograph. It was drawn for me by my daughter-in-law, who we thought it would look nicer if she made a painting of it. And that's what that is. The DNA of the virus is drained into the bacteria, and the viral DNA are there. Now, when they're there, um, they begin to hatch into new viruses. Now when that happens, they begin taking the nutrient out of the bacteria, and the bacteria starts to die, and its chromosome breaks up. And when that happens, some of the newborn uh, viruses have a particle of the bacterial DNA within them. And then a new uh, virus comes along and lands on a bacteria, and its DNA or the new bacteria, pardon me, has the old bacterial DNA plus a particle of the viral DNA. So what do you have? You have the old brucellosis in terms of the physical damage together with the, with the viral damage of uh, the bees, the virus. Um, this final overhead. A report on all of this that I've told you has given to the Senate not too long ago. Those making the reports said that unfortunately some of the detailed working papers have since been destroyed about how they did these things. But they are not all. From its inception, now here's another point to make. From its inception, the program was characterized by continuing in-depth review and participation by most eminent scientists, medical consultants, industrial experts, and government officials. It wasn't something that was just a couple of lunatics down in the basement with a, you know, with a couple of bottles of tremendous brew that they're mixing together. This was big time. This was big time. And uh, also, uh, because of potential biological warfare, warfare threats still exist, the U.S. maintains a defensive biological warfare program in accordance with the 1969 presidential policy, which is a lot of baloney. Uh, they say defensive. It's uh, offensive as well. Okay, here's an overview then that I've given to you. And I'll just wind it up with alluding to a couple things very quickly. 